I'm going to talk about Obsidian, uh, Obsidian and uh, how to manage your uh, knowledge. So I don't talk about your project management, but about your knowledge, you, what you know, what you, you learn, etc. And me, I, I am, uh, as you perhaps know, I am developing a training about uh, AI. And uh, I don't know AI at first. I, I knew some stuff, of course, but I need to, to learn a lot of new uh, new things. I need to, uh, I need to learn uh, which AI tool you can use. And I am dedicated to the world of AOC, so specifically which type of tool you can use in AOC uh, about AI. I'm also, I need to learn also what is AI at the first place, uh, how stable diffusion works, for example, so a lot of subjects. And in our current world, th there is many information. Uh, we can go to LinkedIn, and if you start to, uh, to focus on a topic like me uh, with AI in AOC, you start to know a bit uh, the people that share some knowledge, and there are, ma there are many, not so much, but uh, there are a bunch of people that uh, are very regular at sharing uh, uh, insightful content but generally you uh, at first at, at least I feel a bit overwhelmed um, many techniques how to do that how to do this uh, you need to do that and so on but at the end you are not uh, always on the topic itself and you lose the information you forget so even if you take time to read e even if you watch a YouTube video with very insightful uh, advice you end up uh, losing the information and this is bad I think <laughs> and um, at first I uh, since two years or three years I use notion so probably you you know notion notion is um, uh, a software that you a platform uh, that you can use online directly and uh, you can uh, create some pages some databases uh, it's very easy to to use and you could uh, you could that way uh, every time you you find some interesting stuff you you even have uh, an extension ca called uh, web clipper where when you find an article about AI for example you could uh, you could uh, just click on the extension and say okay add it to this database uh, generally, you could uh, create some database to store some information by type. For example, I, I created the AI in IOC database of the tools. Uh, you, you find it in the description if you are interested. And this is the way I, I did. Every time I find a new tool, I go to the web extension uh, uh, Notion Clipper and I add it to the database. But the problem with that is that uh, you are happy when you add it because you, you think, okay, uh, I will not lose this information. But after, you don't revisit uh, what you just added. I mean, uh, I, I didn't even uh, read the article sometimes. So just tell to myself, okay, I'm going to read, but finally I didn't do it. And this is bad. So I, um, I discovered lately another tool which could be an alternative of uh, from uh, notion if your goal is not to do some project management so not to manage a task to manage some um, some uh, non-permanent uh, stuff so some stuff that are uh, specific to you but a knowledge base the difference is that the knowledge base is relative to what you learn to the world so it's a bit similar to wiki and uh, you know that there is a wikipedia of course and maybe you could ask yourself, okay, but there is Wikipedia, there is many information. Why I'm going to take the time to enter it again, to consolidate again in my own tool? This could be a very uh, um, interesting. At first, you could say, okay, why? But uh, me, my response that I have now is that when you do this, you learn faster. You understand what you write, basically. And it's better to have little information but to have it with your own word than to have a full uh, wiki page that you don't even read and you don't even understand and uh, to do that you are not obliged to take time to say okay this morning i'm going to learn i'm going to make a full pages of information about uh, i don't know which tool to use in ai uh, in architecture and construction no the advantage of this technique is that you can do it progressively step by step okay you read an article this morning it's very interesting. You are not go going to do it for all articles, but I'm going to copy it in my Obsidian. Uh, and from this article, I'm going to read it. And when I found some concepts that are interesting, uh, that are permanent, that is, uh, for example, if the article uh, explains how to use table diffusion to create 
image and at the moment it explains uh, a specific technique by this technique it's reusable so I, I am not going to keep it here I'm going to uh, to rewrite or to text the chunk of text and put it in a specific place in my knowledge base still on my screen but I, I show what was behind my uh, my photo uh, so this is a famous screen because often maybe you have already seen it but people share uh, this type of uh, of uh, graph it's called the graph because the graph is uh, is pond uh, nodes uh, which are linked by uh, some uh, vectors or <laughs> what do you call it so for example uh, i interested me about a neural network and i want to understand the concept and i created a few uh, pages that are related to this for example a neuron is uh, the basic constituent of a neural network, a weight is a coefficient that determines if the information flow down or not in a neural network, etc. I have also the French version of it. And uh, this is what I learned about it. Uh, and it is linked to other pages where neur neural network um, uh, have some meaning. For example, if I want to list all the AI type, Neural network is a type of AI, uh, but we can also say generative AI is a type of AI. So, so now you can, you can uh, that way map all the context. Uh, when I talk about generative AI, generally I split it down to what it generates. It generates text, so it's another, uh, another page. And this page, it's not already linked, but uh, of course, uh, ChatGPT is a uh, text generating AI. So I can link it uh, to this page and here, I can add it progressively more information. So basically this uh, Obsidian, this wiki, is based in a file uh, which are in the Markdown format. So Markdown is a simple format that is used very uh, commonly on the web when you, you do a blog, when you do some, um, some uh, web pages, often you can use the Markdown format which has the advantage to be uh, very um, very pure. There is no uh, HTML formatting uh, problem. Uh, you, you have only uh, a few options, but it's the options that are really needed, which are the level of title, uh, title one, title two, title three. You could use a bullet point, you could use the image. You, you have a few options, but they are very um, uh, limited and very, very uh, clean when you look at the original file. Because what I see here is the result of the uh, markdown. For example, this is a link, but when I, uh, this is an internal link, by the way, and this is an external link, link and when I, uh, I click on it, I can have, uh, here, here you see, this is the markdown uh, way to write a link. It's a text, and this is the URL, the link itself. Uh, so it means uh, you, you you can just ignore that if you don't care, but uh, it means that uh, you are going to have some very um, portable uh, text that you could use in other contexts. You could create your site uh, using the same markdown and so on. So it's a good uh, format and these files uh, belongs to you. It's not owned in a server, in a database that, that you don't own. Uh, for example, if you use Notion, okay, Notion is great, but uh, the content of Notion is in Notion database. If Notion for uh, any reason uh, stop to to uh, its activity or or if you don't have access anymore to your uh, Notion uh, workspace, you lose your data. Instead, Obsidian works differently. You could have some file, any type of file, but uh, Obsidian care about uh, image and uh, markdown file, basically. So if you have some uh, file ending with MD, uh, it will take it into account. So you could uh, totally have uh, an existing base of file like this with a text file, and uh, you could load it in uh, Obsidian Vault. So their, their main concept is a vault. Vault, <laughs> and the vault uh, are specific to a machine. So you could, um, if you have several machines, you could synchronize your vault, either using uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, or uh, already existing cloud uh, files, uh, cloud um, uh, file management tool, or you could use uh, uh, Obsidian service, but uh, which uh, you need to pay for. Except for that, Obsidian is free. It's another big advantage of it. But after you, you, you may say, okay, but uh, what's the real difference if it is only uh, uh, tools that uh, 
that manage a text file, I can use my text editor and it's okay. Uh, I mean, uh, a text editor, not Word, but uh, something like uh, TextMate or, uh, or VS Code, which is a, a very good uh, text editor for uh, web developer that you can use also. Uh, but uh, no, there is a difference. It is totally uh, optimized for its task, which uh, which is to to manage a wiki. So, for example, if you have a link from one page to another, uh, it is uh, and you you move the file, the file are automatically the link are automatically updated. So you you don't have to uh, wor worry about uh, uh, losing your information. So here I am on um, a page a note about Revit and I have all the contents that are linked to it. So if I try to, to explain you a bit the global organization, basically you have a folder for the knowledge, for the wiki. It's uh, what is called atomic notes. It means that uh, when you talk about Revit, it's one note. You, you have only one, one Revit, so you have one note. If you are more specific, for example, if you, you talk about a specific part of Revit, so if I go here, I organize it in, uh, in AEC, uh, uh, no, it's, uh, I put it in uh, BIM CAD uh, uh, tools, it's in French, but uh, here I have, uh, I have uh, a full Revit, uh, um, let's say, uh, folder where I, uh, I, I create more uh, information, more notes. So, for example, if I want to list all the possible actions that I can do in Revit, I can do it like this. Here I have a note, blend a 2D shape, and blend a 2D shape is uh, currently uh, linked to, to the shape. <laughs> so it's not very interesting for this example, but basically you could, um, yeah, to the shape is a concept of Revit, a, a possibilities of Revit, because currently I don't know Revit w very well. So I want to know what is possible, what are the concepts and what are the actions that we can do. So uh, in order to, um, to do that, I, I just uh, read some uh, tutorial, I, I look at some video and I make some notes like this. Even at, at the beginning, there is no content in the notes, there is n no problem with it, but at least I know that I could add more information in the future. So this is the knowledge, and after I have uh, the, uh, sorry, uh, I was checking something in my recording software. <laughs> I, have, uh, I have the content, so the content is, uh, is basically what I publish on social network. So I have a dedicated folder about that. And then I have some uh, folder uh, prepended with uh, two, uh, which means uh, to me, uh, it's a project. So it's uh, totally, uh, you could organize as you want. Uh, but um, basically I think there is a, uh, three or four main type of folder. So one is knowledge, wiki, uh, it's where you put your atomic uh, notes, so the notes that are go not going to change in the future, that are not depending on, on you, it's uh, just uh, like uh, Wikipedia, let's say, but your own wiki. Uh, resources is what you uh, read, what you watch, and I, I organize it by my uh, topics as well. So when I, I have, uh, for example, um, uh, I read recently an article about uh, Revit uh, uh, here on LinkedIn and I note it and after I make some connection with my internal node to extract the information. Uh, so if there is something very interesting and uh, permanent that I found in the article, I can use, I can put it in knowledge or uh, just by rewriting it or uh, copy, uh, copying uh, one part of the text. So this is for resources, is the folder where you put inside of your vault, of your uh, knowledge base, uh, the, the content which come from the exterior. After projects, so it's your particular action that you care about depending of what you're doing. If you, for example, if you are an architect and you are doing uh, planning, designing some, uh, some spaces and uh, during the day you go to a restaurant where there is a good example of something that you can reuse. So this example, you could add a photo, you could add uh, audio notes that you could put in your resources. And after, you could have a knowledge base about, uh, let's say that this element that you uh, noticed is a table with a good integration with a window and so on. And uh, you take a photo, you make a small note, and after you could have a relation with a note about table in a restaurant or restaurant. You, you, you organize as you want, but the idea is that you, you take something from exterior 
from the exterior and instead of not doing nothing with it you link it with the permanent beds that you can use in your project so uh, this is what feed your your knowledge and project is where you use the knowledge and finally uh, you could um, you could do wha what is called the templatization so it means that uh, when you do always the same uh, action uh, it's good to document your action uh, to uh, make it uh, smoother to not lose time in details that you don't optimize and to do that you could uh, create some templates so templates is very easy it's like a normal note except that uh, the content you are not going to put some specific content but m more the organization of the note so after when you create a specific note so for example if i i want to create a new um, a new uh, let's say uh, training uh, training session this is uh, when, when i i do some online course or some course in French, sorry, but uh, I want to organize information that way. So anytime I create a new course, I create new course and I have already the structure which is the same. So I think uh, I'm going to stop here for now. It's already a lot of information. I go back to this very nice uh, um, uh, display where you can see I, I already make some uh, research about stable diffusion neural network generative AI and so on and you see where uh, all this uh, content relates together if you don't know me I am Sebastian and uh, on this channel I talk uh, mainly about AI in IOC uh, but also about the tool around the productivity in IOC and I'm going to uh, start to uh, develop some courses online courses so that you can really empower with uh, AI in IOC uh, I already started in French but now I will start in English and the goal of this course will be uh, to uh, progressively uh, teach you the basis of what is AI how to use it, why you should use it in the first place, what type of tool you can use, uh, how to, do, to make some uh, images, some renders with uh, AI, uh, how to uh, build your own assistant so you can uh, save time and be more efficient as an architect or IOC professional and how you can modelize and uh, design uh, with AI uh, to get more idea and to go faster on what is automatizable and to take time to do uh, manual, uh, more uh, in-depth design in the other topic. So if you are interested, uh, the course I want to launch uh, will be uh, every week. So every week there will be a new private video that you will not have access to in uh, YouTube where I will spend time explaining you some concept uh, about uh, what I have just uh, said before uh, so uh, to access that uh, there is a, a fixed price uh, per month uh, which is low uh, I will start uh, as low as uh, $15 per month and every month when the, co uh, the content get added to, uh, to this uh, training uh, workspace uh, it will be uh, more expensive but only for the newcomers so if you come uh, first you could uh, keep uh, with a very low price and and uh, you will keep with it. Uh, I, that way it could be very uh, motivating for me because I, I could have uh, exchanges with you inside the private community uh, to determine what is your priority, what you want to learn first, but also the more we are, uh, the, the, the more <laughs> uh, video lesson uh, I could produce for you. So if, I, uh, if you are interested uh, to learn AI in IOC with me, with a French accent, <laughs> uh, you could uh, click on the link in the description. So thank you very much and uh, if, you're, if you uh, subscribe to this channel, uh, we see you in the next video. Bye bye.